paragraph of Beis. Now Rav Nelson Zal says, the Koirach, the Machloi Kosoi, Pogam Becholze. Koirach, in his Machloikis against Moshe Rabbeinu, was Pogam in everything that we're describing here. Ki Cholak al Moshe, Shehu Klal HaToyra. By going to battle against Moshe Rabbeinu, he was going to battle against the entire Torah. Because Rabbeinu Zal brings in one place in Likut Imran, quoting the Roikeach, that the words Moshe Rabbeinu are Begimatria 613, exactly. Showing that Moshe Rabbeinu is the Klolius HaToyra. Battle against him is a battle against the whole Torah. Vaydezeh Chola Kapnimius Machitzonius. And we learned before that one of the main purposes of the Torah is the Torah is the thing that teaches you and that makes the Kesher between Chitzonius and Pneumius. So if Koirach was Choylik against the Torah, he was being Choylik against the Kesher between Pneumius and Chitzonius. This is why that section in the Chumash begins with the words Vayikach Koirach. Koirach took. The Targum Unkelos and the Targum says on that, the Ispeleg Koirach. Koirach split. Koirach divided. That's the Targum on the word Vayikach. Shecholak vehivdil bein hapnimius vachitzoinius. He made a separation and a break between Pnimius and Chitzoinius. Ki kofar beikar. He showed disbelief in, in Hashem. He showed that he did not believe that it's possible through the Torah to make a kesher between Chitzonius and Pneumius. What caused him to do this? His own desires. Because of his own arrogance. He wanted honor and respect very much. And because of that, he was willing to break the boundaries, crash through the fence in a sense. And what do we see him doing? We see him trying to delve into, trying to understand the reasons for mitzvahs. And he asked the type of questions in religion which you're not allowed to ask. He questioned certain parts of the Torah, which are chukim, which are things that are not based on logic at all, yet Hashem told us this is the way it should be done. As we find in the Chumash, he asked questions like, if a talus is made of all tchelis, does it need tzitzis still? And Moshe Rabbeinu suggests, and he started laughing, ridiculous, imagine, if you have a piece of cloth, and it has one string of tchelis, that's enough. So you're going to say a talus where the beggar itself is made of tchelis, it should need tzitzis? And he asked also about a house needing a mezuzah. He said, what if the house, what if you have a room that has all sfarim in it, wall-to-wall sfarim, do you have to put a mezuzah on? Moshe Rabbeinu said, yes. He said, ridiculous, imagine. The whole concept of a mezuzah is to bring a little Yiddishkeit into the room. Imagine how ridiculous. If the whole room is Yiddishkeit, why in the world should it need a mezuzah? He showed that he was trying to make it that the mitzvahs of the Torah are based only on logic, nothing more than that. There's nothing more than human logic to explain them. And the moment something doesn't correspond to human logic, he was ready to throw it away, chashom, to reject it. Ki pogam We see that he was pogam in the boundaries of the moichin. Which was the item which he was most responsible for establishing. Ki levi. The Levi who bechinas tzimtzum, bechinas din, Korach came from Shevet Levi, and the Levim's function is tzimtzum, din. That's what they represent. They represent a, a certain boundary. The Koyin is chesed. The Levi represents the boundary, the gvura that surrounds the chesed. As we say, bigvurois yesha yeminoi. There are certain psukim in the Torah which show us how these two work together. That's why Moshe Rabbeinu shaved the heads of the Levim completely based on instruction from Hashem. In order to eliminate the hair, which is itself din, 
which wants to attach itself most to the Levian. Because Levi is Din, the Din wants to attach itself, just like Ravina Zal said in that turn the Kutimran, that when a Tzadik gives forth a Tefillah B'Bchina's Din, the Sitrach receives that and wants to grab it to itself very much, because they're Din. They know that that's what they're supposed to latch on to. Here also, Levi is Din, and hair is din. And if you have hair on a levy, the sitrachra would want to attach itself very, very solidly to that. Because of the fact that the Jews participated in the Egel, the golden calf, that allowed the Sitrachra to have to attach itself to them. One of the main places where the Sitrachra attaches itself to a person is in the hair. Because they are able to draw nourishment from Tzimtzum, from anything that represents Tzimtzum. Shehu Bechina Sitra de Livoi, which is the, the concept of Levi. V'yalkein hochrach legaleach kol saroiseim. That's why Moshe Rabbeinu was compelled to shave off all their hair. Kedei levatei lachizosom shela sitrachra. In order to make it impossible for the sitrachra to latch on to the Levim. Kedei shishoaru halavim rak bebechina sa Tzimtzum akodosh beli achizas ha sitrachra. So that the Levim should remain as a Tzimtzum of Kiddusha without the Sitrachra being attached to them. Shezeh ha Tzimtzum hu Tikkun Godoil, where this Tzimtzum of Kiddusha is a very important Tikkun, it's a very important item. Because it's impossible for a person to be zechet to understand the true sechel, which is represented by the concept of koyhen, without the tzimtzum, which is the bechin of levi. Just like we mentioned many times regarding Rabbi Nezal and Rabbi Nezal, that it's impossible for a person to understand the Likute Moran and Rabbi Nezal's teachings properly without the student, without Rab Nusenzal's teachings, without Likutei Alochos, Likutei Tfilos, those things. Because Rebbe Talmud is Koyhen Levi. The word Levi means Hanil Vimeilov, those that are attached to him. The Levim represent the students of the Koyhen. They were the ones who served the Koyhen, just like a Talmud of a Rebbe, Elisha, who served his Rebbe Elioanovi. So therefore, the Tzimtzum is very important. The Levim play a very important role in Klal Yisrael being able to benefit from the Seichel Dikdusha of the Koyhanim. That's why Koyrach was supposed to be Machnia himself tremendously to Aharon Koyen and his sons. And if he would have done that, then the Tzimtzum and the Seichel would have been united. Bechinas Chain, the concept that Rabbein Ezzel spoke about in Torah from the Kutimran of the Chain, the Ches and the Nun, the Chochma and the Malchus, as is brought in that chapter in the Kutimran, Shaydezeh Nistakein HaKoyl, and that would have made everything good. Avul Koyrach, Machmas Taivas HaKovoid, however, Koyrach, because of his desire for personal glory, Pogam Bechol Zeh, he ended up messing all of this up. The Cholak Al Moishev Yaroin, and he ended up going against Moish Rabbeinu and Arna Koyim. Verotzo Lihiyois Koyim, and Koyrach wanted to become a Koyim. Upogam Bahat Simsum, and therefore he ended up being Poygim in the Simsum. Ki Rotzo Lahasig Asechel Belit Simsum. He started asking these questions, which were wrong, illegitimate questions. He broke through the fence. He went past the line. Thereby, he messed up his seichel completely. And he went outside. And he ended up in disagreement with the entire Torah. And thereby, he made a separation between Pnimius and Chitzonius. Because he didn't believe in the Torah. Now we could understand why the punishment of Koyrach was that the earth opened up its mouth and swallowed him and his company up alive. They didn't experience death, in a sense. Kikach roi loi. This was most appropriate for him. Ki heruloi, Hashem was showing him, ki ma shepogam sherotzolach loi kachitsonis meapnimis, that the mistake that he made of trying to make a separation between chitsonis and pnimis, vooz bechayov koroi meis, if you separate the pnimis from the chitsonis, 
you cause death. Even while the person's physically living, he's a living corpse. As it says, a Russia, while he's living, is called dead. Why? Because while he's living, he sends the Neshama for a walk. He tells the Neshama to go fly a kite, to separate from him. Koirach was the one who was the leader in being Choylik against Moshe Rabbeinu and in separating the Chitzonius from the Primius, Alkain taketh from Yad Chot therefore the earth grabbed him immediately, Ubolo Oisoy Bechayov Lemato Lemokom Horoiloi, and the earth swallowed him up all the way down to the place that was appropriate for him. To the eighth floor downstairs, which represents the epitome of Chitzonius. Because if you remember, we said before that May Roish Vat Soif, Roish was Primius, Soif, all the way on bottom was Chitzonius. So because he caused Pirud between Primius and Chitzonius, they sent him all the way to the epitome of Chitzonius. The terms Shamaim and Eretz represent Pneumius and Chitzonius. There's a Pesach that the Gemara quotes in Chagiga, where when the Gemara wants to say that when a person passes away, they get the Neshama and the Guf, and they put them together, and they judge them together. So the Gemara there quotes the Pesach, Yikore el Shamayim Mimal veloretz mitochas, and bring them together. So the Gemara says there, Shamayim Mimal zu haneshama, oretz mitachas is the Guf. So we see that Arceus is Chitzonius, Guf. V'alkein ho'odom ho'ilech bekoimo zekufo bein ha'shamayim o bein oretz. It's for this reason that man walks upright. Man walks standing up where the feet are facing Eretz and the head is facing upward to Shamayim. Ki hu sulom mutzav because man represents a ladder that's standing on the Oretz, on the ground, bebchinas chitzonius, ki malubash beguf, because the Nisham is cloaked in a body, avol roishoi magia ha-shamayma, but man has the ability with his roish to reach up to Shamayim, shehu ha-seichel, shu bechinas elyoinoi sadovor, bechinas pnimius, that represents the upper part of it, ki ho'odon tzorech lekasher ha-koil l'sharoshoi, because man is responsible to attach everything to its Shorish, which is Hashem, which is heavenliness. Vazai hu And to the extent that a person is zoicha to do that, that person lives permanently, lives forever. To the extent that a person maintains the kesher between the chitzonius and primius. Avol koirach, sheholak kolkach. But koirach, who is choilech, he divided to such an extent. Vehifred bein aprimius va chitzonius and made pirud between primius and chitzonius, bein shemaim loretz. Alkein, that's why the earth opened its mouth and swallowed him up alive.